The history of the Atari ST in the USA defined by ST Log Magazine. In this series, we'll be going through the American history of the Atari ST by focusing on ST Log Magazine, which started as an insert into the original Atari 8-bit magazine, Analog, and then became its own animal for a number of years, only to be incorporated back into Analog Magazine as Atari Corp focused its efforts on video game systems and the European market. In this series, we'll be taking a look at each issue, commenting based on our memories, and pausing along the way to take a little deeper look at some of the games, products, and features that interest us here at 8-Bit Rocket Towers. Now, I know this is not a new idea. The Player Missile Podcast does Atari 8-Bit games in the Atari magazines, Inverse Atasky does Antic Magazine and has done some ST in the past. Pete Davidson is currently doing Page 6 on his channel, and the Retro Layered has covered and continues to cover ST action as well as others. There are countless podcasts such as the great Video Game Newsroom Time Machine that attempt to cover the wide breadth of news from magazines and newspapers. So how are we unique? Well, we'll try to cover ground others have bypassed or have not reached at all. So that's why we're starting with ST Log Magazine, as it was our favorite American magazine that covered the ST and also has not been covered much elsewhere. I've wanted to cover the ST in the USA for a long time because it seems most people don't even know the ST existed here. While it had its most success there, it has history on these shores too. So let's get started. Tracking the history of the Atari ST from the American perspective from ST Log Magazine starting with April 1986. So the first page comes up with an Abacus ad, and this is an ad that we saw a lot. This has all of the books that you really needed to uh, to understand the Atari ST from ST Internals, ST Gem, Programmer's Reference, uh, Machine Language, Tips and Tricks, Graphics and Sound, Logo, Peace and Pokes, uh, etc. Um, and uh, presenting the Atari ST, I have a bunch of these books. <music> The Atari ST internal book by Data Becker, published by Abacus, was essential for many early ST developers to learn everything they could about the system. From 68,000 processor registers to the memory management with the MMU and how bit planes work with the shifter, from manipulating sound registers to the MIDI port pinouts, everything a budding ST hardware or software developer needed to know was included. Later versions also covered the Blitter internals and beyond. Features, here's the table of contents. The features are going to be ST Check, which is a checksum program. Uh, dot, Mr. Scratch, which is a, uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, maybe a game you type in. Uh, Gemsys, reviews of Braticus, one of the first, not the first games, one of the first games with Psygnosis. So really one of the first imported games. Uh, My Term by Mitstron, which is a telecommunications program. Then we have News. Uh, article about C and you can see it's part three. I'm pretty sure that what happened was the analog magazine started with some little pieces about the ST and then finally they made uh, an edition of a magazine ST log that it was inserted into it. So that's why these are like page 53 ST, page 57, page 71. This was actually inserted in. So before this, an analog magazine had little parts about the ST here and there. But we're going to start with the actual first premiere issue inserted into analog, which was this premiere edition of April 1986. And then you have an index to advertise this. So let's take a look. Let's continue going. Okay, here's an ad for the graphic artist. This is a software for the Atari ST, a graphic artist software. ST Check, this is a checksum program for the Atari 520 ST. This issue marks the first appearance within analog computing's pages of a basic program for the Atari ST. Those of you who spent a good deal of your free time typing in listings from the magazines surely have grown accustomed to using the checksum data program for basic. So this is one for Atari ST basic. And um, you would type in your listing, then you'd use this checksum program to make sure that you typed it in correctly. And here's ST News. So the first news they have is there's a uh, MIDI user guide, for the ST, there's a MT shell, which is a multitasking shell. 
toolboxes, the math toolbox, there's our spell checker, a super 3D plotter, solar disk, and bitmap coloring books. So all of it sort of all some basic computer things that are happening right now for the ST. Not a lot of gaming, but this is it's becoming like a real computer. Mr. Scratch. So this is a game you type in, it looks like. You want to what? You heard me replied, Scratch, eyeing his assistant with annoyance. His tail twitched and his barb struck the floor with a loud thwack. This schmuck was a perfect example of his current dilemma. He needed good people down here, not these muddle-brained losers lacking in vision and ambition. Advertise, Scratch continued. That's how all the successful companies on the surface get their trade. So I think um, Mr. Scratch looks like he's a demon or something like that. New for the ST, the Logicron clock card. So I don't know how you'd insert this in the Atari ST. Oh, it's a cartridge. So a clock cartridge, a solitaire game, um, a study guide for education, and a calendar. So we're starting to see more and more software for the Atari ST, useful software. So the game. This is Mr. Scratch it says plain. It's a text adventure. So as in most text adventures, you communicate with Mr. Scratch by two word commands. So it's a very interesting that the, the first basic type in is a text adventure. And then we have all of the typing and the parser and the text and and seamanship part three. So let's see what they're doing in C for this one. This is a part three of their ongoing starting in analog C uh, tutorial. And they are looking at, so looping structures are your agenda. So this is, let's see what kind of loops they're doing. A while loop. So they're doing a while loop in C and a for loop. That's kind of it. Four loops and while loops. Basic programming control structures. So I know C looks really weird. C is as easy to use as basic if you know what you're doing. It's C is a very simple language. You don't have as much string control as you have in basic, but Besides that, C, you have to be very careful about you can overload memory registers really easy by um, adding uh, too much to a string or a char, things like that. But anyway, um, Gem Sys, a tutorial on ST basic commands for the AES function. So Gem AES basic. So this is things like providing a timer, creating a menu bar, producing drop down menus, creating alert boxes, dialog boxes, shrinking dragging boxes, all of this stuff was really interesting when you first got an ST. Like, how do I do that stuff in the interface? Because it has an actual operating system. Um, and uh, it didn't help us with game programming at all, but you know, obviously the ST is not a game machine. It's really built around uh, hard work. And um, it was actually hard work to make a good game in it. And um, that's why uh, early on, a lot of the games are very good. Uh, SD doesn't sell as many as some other systems, so the games are kind of mediocre. And then when everybody learns how to use the SD, by the end, the games are better again. Um, and then they sort of peter out, and the Amiga wins. Or actually, the PC actually wins. But um, the AES library, vent library, you know, it was our first tr look at making a vent style programming. Um, Jim Luzak maintains and operates the electronic telephone switching and processing equipment. Interesting. He's a, he's a, uh, he's a Gemsys programmer in basic too. Okay. Bradicus. Bradicus. According to Britsoft, an oral history book by Eugene Evans, Bradicus was originally intended for release on the Sinclair QL under the name Bandersnatch. It was released in 1985 for the Mac, Amiga, and Atari ST. On the Atari ST, it runs in medium and high resolution. The game received positive reviews, but was and is very difficult to control. It is built as an action game, but really is a very intricate adventure with a lot to accomplish. The control is based around what the dev team calls implied action, which means the computer will interpret the implied action based on context with the limited controls. What I find here is notoriously buggy and difficult to use controls, but a game that could have been revolutionary. Let's just get to the last thing they say about Bradicus. 
It says, Psygnosis should be congratulated on a fine effort. I can't wait to see what they produce, what products they'll be bringing in the marketplace in the future. If this game is any indication of what's in store for the ST adventurers, for ST adventurers, then there are exciting times ahead. What can I say? Buy it. Um, and Brodicus, you know, probably a pretty, pretty good game. Um, it's not action-packed. You, it's more uh, thought-provoking. Um, you do have to sort of shoot a little bit. It's, it's like early ST games. It, it tried to see, figure out how to use the mouse and the keyboard more than a joystick. And, um, you know, it did good at that. So what, do we, what else do we have here? The stylish software. Haba Rider. This is an Haba phone and Haba disk and 10 megabyte hard drive. The 10 megabyte hard drive, 699.95, which I think is around, I'm just gonna guess double now. So we're saying that's about $1,500 for um, 1,400, but you know, with tax, 1,500 for a uh, 10 megabyte hard drive back then. Um, you can't even get a USB uh, plug-in drive for that's 10 megs anymore. Okay. The uh, Haba Rider full function word processor was $74.95 and Haba Phone $49.95. Hobba View. I could not find Hobba Write to demonstrate, but at this time, Hobba View, a sort of database style piece of software, was also released. Along with games, we were also very interested in having the computer perform useful tasks. One of these was organizing our collections or even making phone lists. Remember having a phone list of friends on the wall next to your phone? Anyway, these types of useful uses for the computer, especially the new, more powerful ST, excited us almost, almost as much as games did. And Mitstron, my term, let's just get to the, uh, the jux of it. Overall, my term is an excellent telecommunications program. Kudos should be given to the author, John Weaver, for not only creating a useful program, but designing it in such a way as to be easy to use. If you want or need more features than are provided in say ST Talk, yet you don't want to spend $100 for PC intercom and get only text-based program, then you should seriously consider Mitstron's latest product. Very cool. Here's a ad, you got a Calcom Inc. ad in uh, Buena Park, California. I had no idea they existed. Would have gone there if I knew they existed because we live relatively close. There's one in Maryland and one in California. Rocky Mountain Software in Boulder, Colorado. Forum ST, bulletin board system. A lot of people use that. And the 1-800 Ataris in Gatenburg, Maryland. Uh, and then here's a cool picture of an Atari ST on top of a, a Ferrari. The Atari ST computer line from Atari. This was one of the cool ads. Like getting the power and speed of a Ferrari for the price of a Ford. And then this is where they have the big, let's see if we can zoom in on this a little bit. I don't know if I can. Oh, I can. This is so for $999, you got the 1040ST and a color monitor. The equivalent was the Amiga 1000 at $800 more for basically the same thing, but the Amiga obviously, Amiga had better graphics and sound, we know that. Um, but for the PC, you were talking about $5,000 for the same thing equivalent, Macintosh 2000 and Apple IIc 1295 for very similar, you know, 16-bit machine. ST, a very good bargain at that point. Um, none of us were thinking about you know arcade games at that point on the Atari ST. We were thinking about it just being a damn good computer. Um, and let's move on. And that is it. That is the back cover of ST Log Magazine number one. So that's it for issue one of ST Log. We'll be covering all ST Log issues to explore the history of the Atari ST in the USA. Until next time, into the vertical blank.